I know my shirt isn't the right shade of blue, but let's talk West Virginia football anyway. In this case, the quarterbacks. If 2023 were a Star Wars movie, it would be Episode 4, A New Hope. And a lot of that revolves around Garrett Green and Nico Marchiol, either one of whom could easily play Luke Skywalker. But I'm going to go backwards a bit, look at JT Daniels first, because there are some significant contrasts. Of course, Daniels was the last in a long line of patches, and just trying to get to the point where we could have a quarterback that Neil Brown had recruited and trained. And be sure this is the kind of quarterback he's been after, and the one that would allow him or more particularly Chad Scott, to run the type of offense he's been after from the beginning. Now, JT Daniels, he was a hope, but I'm not sure he was a good one. Daniels is a technician. He knows what to do, and his descriptions of plays, his analysis, in press conferences was fun to watch. But he also denied the importance of chemistry. Chemistry with the receivers, which also means chemistry with the rest of the team. And it's hard to be a leader. It's hard to lift a team if you don't believe in chemistry. You almost never saw Daniels running downfield to congratulate a player who just made a big play. You didn't see a lot of, lot of activity on the sidelines. He was there doing a job. And that's fine. That works for some players on some teams with some coaches. But Neil Brown is all about chemistry. He works to create chemistry and use it. Daniels didn't fit. He may have been a necessary choice at the time. Certainly neither Markiel nor Green were ready at the beginning of 2022, and Green was barely ready at the end of 22. But now, it's 2023, and some things have happened. We saw hope for Green uh, at the end of 2022. We saw questions about Marchio, some hope, some doubts. During spring practice, we were told that it was pretty much neck and neck. It was rather like listening to a horse race on the radio because we never really got to see anything. We were just told that they were neck and neck going into the first turn, even coming down the home stretch for spring. But when we got into the spring game, it was a different story. Marchio, he wasn't bad. He made some really good passes. Made some very good passes. He didn't make any big mistakes. But whether he did well or badly on a play, he didn't look good doing it. He didn't look comfortable. He didn't look athletic. He didn't look smooth. And I think something, you know, in the learning process happened in the week ahead because we were told that that Tuesday neither Markiel nor Green had a good day. And I think what we were seeing was some of the result of the change in quarterback coaches. Keep in mind, Markiel is a sophomore, he's on his second quarterback coach. And there's a big difference, I'm pretty sure, in how Harrell and Reagan teach the quarterback position. Harrell, he was all about three steps and the ball's out. I think that he fit well with Daniels because he was a technician himself. But I don't think he was all that good at giving a quarterback an idea of what to do when the play doesn't go exactly the way it's drawn up. Quarterback, you know, well, Football can be a very precise game, can be a very messy game, and I think Reagan understands that and compensates for it better than Harrell. 
but that complicates things for Marchio. In the long run, it's going to benefit. I think we've all underestimated Reagan. Uh, his press conference before the spring game was rather impressive. But he looks like the uncle who comes to the family reunion and nobody really notices. And we haven't really noticed him. We haven't respected him. I think we're going to see results this year that will teach us some respect. But when you're learning something new, you reach a point where it kind of falls apart. You're not good enough at it. And then you learn that thing and you get good at it, and something that you were good at before suddenly slips a little. You hit a little, instead of a peak, you hit a valley. And I think what we saw with Mark Hill in the spring game was a valley. Just a little shift in the learning process, and he's going to come out of it. He will eventually put everything together so that the whole game makes sense and things slow down. He can do it quickly, he can do it smoothly. When that will happen? No way to predict. I think it will happen this year sometime. What we do know is that it happened for Garrett Green. The end of 2022 we saw him making better decisions, but he was still hurrying the process. He was still making mistakes as well. Because for the first two years, Garrett Green was a golden lab puppy running around having fun. Bundles and bundles of energy and no control. And he knew it. I mean, that's why he supported Deggie. That's why he supported Coach Brown. He's talked about what problems he's had with the decision making. And in the spring game, that was a different Garrett Green. He was confident, he was smooth. And he took time. He made the right decisions. He made them quickly enough. But he didn't make them too quickly. The first pass to Aaron had me excited because last year, especially the beginning of last year, Green would have thrown that ball too early, too hard, too high. And this one it was a tad high, but I think it was where it needed to be. And it was right between three receivers. And this was the kind of pass that was giving Green a lot of trouble. Wouldn't have been surprised last year if he had just dropped back and taken off and hit a pile in the middle and you know, barely made the line of scrimmage. That was part of his M.O. before. But you could even see it when he was interacting with the kids. He's matured. Garrett Green is an adult now. And he's still got all that bundle, bundle of energy. He's still the golden retriever. But it's controlled now. It's focused. And actually, as an aside, I think, you know, we really saw that focus in an important way on his pass reception. He was stumbling. He still stayed focused enough to make the catch to stay on his feet and make the touchdown. And I don't know that Garrett Green can make the NFL or even the XFL as a quarterback. I know that players his height have had success, but scouts and coaches and fans still have doubts about that. However, if the scouts look at that catch, they can't doubt his hands. And that may be his ticket to the NFL. But right now, it's 2023 that matters. I'm convinced that Garrett Green will start for 2023. Will something happen that puts Mark Hill ahead before the season's over? Maybe, but I don't think so. Uh, they both have talent. They both have leadership skills. They're both all about chemistry. They love to play the game. They get the players around them excited to play the game. That's going to make a big difference, but right now Garrett Green, well, 
as Coach Brown has described it, he's got the it factor and he's got the twitch. Mark Eld has the it factor, no doubt. Doesn't have the same twitch. And I think right now, the team needs that twitch. And I think we're going to see it pay dividends in 2023. Maybe into 2024. Could be another battle. We'll see. But I have a new hope. Thanks for dropping in. Please like, subscribe, comment. Come back to see me again. We'll talk more WVU football. Going deep.